Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's Mitchell again. I, I, I think like I've talked to almost everybody on the floor so far, and, and I hope to talk to everyone again. Uh, but it's, it's wonderful to see you here. We're so excited. This is like uh, something we've been planning for a long time, and it's great to see you all enjoying it. Uh, this is a moment to, to, uh, to celebrate the launch uh, of a new project uh, sponsored by BMZ and uh, executed by UNICEF. Uh, and it's taking place, you can see it live in the, in the what's called the Igloo building over there. Uh, but it's an immersive uh, virtual reality uh, experience that shows you what it's like living in conditions that you've most likely probably haven't seen before and, and haven't really considered. Uh, virtual reality came on the scene a couple of years ago as something that was a novelty. Uh, you know, what we found that people were really interested in it. And so as a campaign, we said, well, we have to go where the eyeballs are. We have to go where people are. And so we started to see there was potential for VR not just to be kind of a novelty, but actually to be a new way of creating empathy. We, were, we called it the empathy machine. Because suddenly you're in the life of someone else. You're outside of your own life. You're, you're outside of your context and in the context of someone else. So this development of empathy, the idea that we care about each other, that even if we're not next to each other, we have a right and an obligation to be you know, uh, in the same community, uh, is very important to the overall message of the SDGs. And that's why we're pursuing it. We've created something called UNVR, which is a whole program supporting people doing VR, doing exhibitions, doing demonstrations. Uh, and we're really delighted uh, by what we've seen here is the journey. This film uh, has taken VR in a whole new uh, direction. Not only is the content really important, but the way that it's presented is, is very novel. So I, I suggest all of you go and see it. It's a virtual reality experience without any of these headsets, and so it's quite immersive, and you can do it with, uh, with colleagues, which is also quite interesting. So once again, these, uh, the, it's, I'm delighted to introduce uh, colleagues from UNICEF and uh, BMZ who will come up and talk a little bit more about this project. Thanks again. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our panel discussion on putting young people at the forefront of the SDGs and using virtual reality to tell the story. Um, my name is Christine. I work for the National Committee of UNICEF Germany. I'm very, very pleased to introduce you to Dr. Inge Dietrich, Commissioner Agenda 2030 for the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, and Mr. Toby Fricker, Emergency Communication Specialist and producer or co-producer of the film The Journey, which you can watch at the other end of this um, lobby. Um, we're, the movie has been produced, it's a virtual reality film produced by UNICEF and BMZ, and it basically aims at bringing the SDGs to life through creative storytelling. Mr. Dietrich, over to you. Could you tell us a little bit um, why BMZ decided to support the movie? Yeah, thank you very much for inviting me, and thank you very much for the question. Well, the first reason for all of all is uh, the the value we give to, to children and youth uh, in, in, in this world and in the implementation of SDGs. We know that all the SDGs are interlinked to children and youth, all the 17, and um, we have about uh, 3.1 billion children and youth on, on, on this world. That means that um, it's an important demographic group. We know that all these uh, killed children and, um, and the youth they have, in, in this world, limited possibilities. They have particular needs, um, and they, have, uh, they are quite vulnerable compared to other groups. So they, they are the hardest to reach, and that, that's, what, that's really a very important issue, how to get to them, how to, to, in, uh, to integrate them. We need integrated approaches. And we are convinced that this um, quite of innovative um, a presentation of the of the movie gives attention to, to, to people and to the kids and, and the youth. It raises awareness, which is one of the most important things to raise awareness for SDGs, for the issues of the kids. And um, this, by a, such an innovative way, we need innovative ways. We can't go on like we did the last years. We can't go on with business as usual. We need some some innovative, some creative, some smart ways. And I think this film is an expression of that. Fantastic, thank you. 
Toby, what is the story of the film and why did he decide to move forward with virtual reality? Uh, yeah, thank you. I think, um, I mean, the, the journey was a very, quite an ambitious project from the start because we really wanted to show um, the, the, the journey of childhood and youth, uh, particularly for those, the most vulnerable children living across the world in sort of very remote locations um, and in, for example, in South Sudan, a conflict-affected country. And I think, um, you know, the, the story basically starts with, uh, with a, a young girl, a three-year-old girl, who's living in remote Ethiopia, um, is suffering from malnutrition. And, and it tries to show really what are the pivotal moments of this young girl's life where the support and opportunities can really make a difference, um, both in an immediate difference, but also a longer term impact. Um, so we really, the film sort of highlights her story where we see the mobile health clinic that comes to this very remote community and provides sort of critical nutrition support. At the same time, they're providing uh, health uh, information uh, that, that the mother can take home and, and use um, sort of on an everyday basis. And, and also there's a new reservoir nearby where the, the, they're getting better access to safe water. So we're seeing that sort of the, the hope within each of the stories we see. We move from Ethiopia, we move to South Sudan, where the, um, the uh, Chankuth, a 10-year-old boy who's um, been displaced by the conflict and is now living in um, a, a, a camp in uh, Juba, and we see him going back to school, getting some basic education, uh, really providing that sort of some normality back into the life. Um, and finally, we see Manny, who's a 19-year-old in southern Chad, and she's, um, she's really engaging with her peers. She's living with HIV. She's trying to break down the stigma of living with HIV. And, and to do that, she's engaging through, through digital technology as well that she has there on, on offer. So I think that really the story looked at very much at a highlighting the issues. But within that, we're bringing out the hope. We're showing what can be done uh, both immediately but also in a longer term to have that sort of impact sort of over the years to come. Why VR? I think... Um, you know, VR, I don't think VR should be used today for the sake of using VR because it is still new, but it's not, not new. Um, and the idea of the journey was really, we wanted to really humanize um, the story. Through VR, you really can still engage viewers uh, into the lives of the children that we see featured in this film. And I think that was critical, being able to take people into those locations, into that environment, places where they, um, many people will probably never go, uh, and, and to take them there and to see the stories firsthand. And very importantly, I think um, what we see is fundamentally that everyone's the same. Every child is the same, every mother's the same. I think in the film you see um, Momima, the mother of Amina, and she's saying, all I want is my child to be healthy and, and, and to live a good life. And I think that is the real sort of value of VR, when you see that firsthand, both through the context, but also through what, what our characters are saying. Very true, thank you. Commissioner Dietrich, why is it so important to put children at the heart of the Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development? The kids are the future. And uh, th it's their world, uh, which we are, or which the present generations are destroying. And I uh, just want to give you um, an example why I also think these movies and uh, these kind of movies are so important. Um, and it, I would like that it also meets not just the adult uh, generation, but it really meets the, 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 the kids and the, and the youth. Uh, a year ago, around this festival, there were this, uh, this flags outside from the SDGs. My daughter saw it and she was calling me and saying, oh, daddy, your SDGs are out on the, on the street. And I had to tell her, my dear, this is not my SDGs, this is your SDGs. You as a young person, you as a kid, a youth, you, you should. And that, that's what I hope from the, from the film, that it's not just addressed to the adult people who, who maybe already know a bit, but the, that the young people understand that's their world and that they are the, the, the drivers of change in, in future time and for that reason it's so important to, uh, to address the SDGs and the messages of the SDGs. It's not just to know the SDGs number six or number five, it's to know the consequences of these SDGs. What does it mean SDG six? It means water. What does it mean in my personal life? What consequences has this to my personal life? I have the same discussion with my daughter, the same daughter. Uh, 
is it necessary to have a shower of, uh, of 10, 12 minutes in the morning? Or wouldn't it be enough to shower maybe three or four minutes? You, you're in the same way you are, you are clean after that. So this kind of discussion that we have to address SDGs to young people because it's their future and their world. Very important indeed. And how is BMZ supporting this work in practice? Uh, this work in general or? The SDGs, promoting the SDGs. Uh, you have two hours? <laughs> <laughs> A short summary will do. <laughs> yeah. no. Well, I, I have to really make it very, very short. Uh, we, we have three columns through pillars. First, we start in Germany. We have a national strategy on sustainable development. We really influence this as BMZ. We are working in, in Germany together with all the partners, all the actors for sustainable development, like civil society, like, like municipalities. So this is the pillar working in Germany. Then we are working together with our partner countries and in our partner countries. Um, we first, we, we started in our same ministry, we, means, we mainstreamed the SDGs in all our projects and methodologies. That means if there's a pro project proposal, the project proposal has to make reference to SDGs. So how is it aligned with the national policy or the regional policy of this country, of this region? Uh, that wasn't like this before. M many things like uh, the um, interconnections between the different uh, dimensions of sustainable development, not just to look on the innovation, on the, on the ecolog ecological innovation, I said that this morning before, but really safeguard this socially, because otherwise we won't have, we won't be, we will, we are, we have also a political program with political priorities, and the political priorities are along the so-called five Ps, people, um, uh, peace, uh, partnership, prosperity, and one is missing, I, I think, uh, planet, thank you very much, yeah. So we aligned this. And then we have a third pillar, and that's all the international uh, areas, how to influence EU, World Bank, G20, a huge area, because just, just uh, to stay with G20, I just come back from, from a meeting, from G20 meeting from Mexico. G20 is responsible for 80% of world population, 84% of green, green, greenhouse gas uh, uh, production, et cetera, et cetera. So without G20, we won't change too much. So these are the three pillars we try to implement the agenda. Great, thank you very much. And Toby, what do you think are the main challenges for reaching the SDGs by 2030 to ensure no child is left behind? Um, I think, well, from a UNICEF perspective, um, we had, there was a report released uh, just last week actually, uh, which looked at um, the progress so for children in the uh, SDG era. And the report looked at um, uh, issues with data. So saying that um, you know, more than half a billion children are, lit are literally uncounted in terms of we don't know what the progress is, uh, what the issues are, you know, that in-depth sort of context of some of these issues. So I think first of all, the, this data issue was raised in this report, and I think it's a very important point. I think also um, you know, I, I wanted to highlight the, the nature of conflict today as well. Uh, where we have these large-scale protracted conflicts in, in environments from South Sudan, as you see in the film, to Ukraine, to Syria, um, and elsewhere. And I, I, I think, you know, we can't do development unless there's safety and security for everyone, particularly children who are affected so much by, by these conflicts and are literally coming under attack. Um, and I think this is critical. Uh, you know, we need to sort of build, you know, build the peace. We need to, to find ways to, to, to sort of break that, that conflict. But also the work goes on. You know, we, we have, for example, the No Lost Generation in the Syria region. It's about keeping children in school, even amidst the mayhem that's ongoing. It's about providing the psychosocial support where we can and providing some degree of normality in, in children's lives, uh, despite the, the horror that they're living through in, in some places across the world. Great. And in view of these challenges, how can new ways of storytelling help to increase engagement for children? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, storytelling techniques are changing so quickly and evolving so much. I mean, we saw uh, the I ICRC came out with an augmented reality piece recently where on your iPhone, literally, uh, it's, it, you're, you're living um, within a sort of war zone within your own bedroom. Um, there's the VR, there's the, the igloo that we're using here to engage people in a shared viewing experience. Um, and then there are, there's so much t uh, technology out there. And I think all of it is bringing situations closer 
to, to commute to people. Uh, we're seeing things more often, but we're also saturated with information. And I think um, that is a, you know, a key issue. There's, there's, there's so much information, so much different types of information out there, um, and how we engage with that in, in many different ways. And I, I think, um, to me, one of the key things really is, is the story. So it's, the, the technique is great, but if it's not a strong story, we can't really engage the audience in it. And I think bringing children into making that story, uh, being part of that story and producing it themselves to really highlight what are the issues affecting children themselves, that they need to sort of bring that out. And I think you know, these are key, key elements. Like in the No Lost Generation, we have children involved in, in advocacy work themselves. So they're actually identifying priorities and, and, and really bringing those to the fore for, for everyone to see. Thank you very much. Commissioner Dietrich, Toby, thank you very much for joining us today. I invite you all to check out the movie The Journey at the Iglo Dome just opposite. And the producer of the film, um, Charlotte, she's in the room as well. So feel free to ask her, the lady in white just over there in the audience, um, to ask her any questions about the production um, and the families featured in the movie. Thank you very much again. Thank you.